once we engage in a therapy of polycythema vera with cytoreductive therapy, and hydroxyurea being usually the first choice, we should be looking at several factors in a, a particular patient beyond just control over red blood cell count. We are talking here about controlling five factors. This would be red blood cells, white cells, platelets, symptoms, and spleen. Patients may have a control over red blood cell count and have a very bad quality of life or an enlarged spleen that is causing trouble. Or they may have a progressive increase of white cells or platelets. So modern way of looking at the benefit of any cytoreductive therapy looks really at these five factors. Controlling of the blood cell count, all three lines, spleen and symptoms. Hydroxyurea may not achieve that in many patients. I'm talking about perhaps 20 to 25% of the patients being either resistant or intolerant to hydroxyurea. New development relatively recently in the United States and Europe is approval of a new medication called ruxolitinib for patients that are intolerant or refractory to hydroxyurea, which would then mean that this is a second line therapy for patients that do not do well on hydroxyurea. The important aspect of development of ruxolitinib is to understand real benefits in modern era. Looking at these five factors that I mentioned, two studies were done so far, and one of them is widely known, it's called the RESPONSE study, where patients that were refractory or intolerant to hydroxyurea and still in the need of the therapy, still requiring phlebotomy, and having enlarged spleen were randomized prospectively between best available therapy, meaning whatever the doctor wants it to do, or ruxolitinib. And in this fashion, looking particularly as a primary goal of reducing the spleen and controlling the red blood cell count, controlling the hematocrit. There was a wide difference, significant difference, on the part of ruxolitinib versus best available therapy. We also look beyond that. We look at the control of the white cells and platelets and symptoms, and all the aspects of the polycythemia vera were very well, well controlled in majority of the patients on ruxolitinib, versus hardly anybody on best available therapy are. So that led to approval of ruxolitinib, a spectrum of benefits. More recently, uh, three months ago, there was an uh, announcement of another study called the RESPONSE-2 study, where similar design was implemented. Patients intolerant or refractory to hydroxyurea in need of therapy with polycythemia vera requiring phlebotomy, but without the big spleen, were tested in the same way, prospective randomized study, ruxolitinib versus best value of therapy, and the results were almost identical to a per first study. Much better control of blood cell count, white cells and platelets and symptoms, versus best value of therapy are. So now we have two large perspective studies confirming benefit of ruxolitinib in a second line patients after hydroxyurea in polycythemia vera. Hydroxyurea is relatively very well tolerated and effective first line therapy for patients with polycythemia vera. Up to a quarter of the patients with hydroxyurea therapy develop resistance or intolerance and they need something else. They need a better therapy that would control their symptoms and signs. And this is particularly important for the patients that are really resistant to hydroxyurea. They do have more aggressive disease. They have more symptoms, bigger spleen. They tend to transform more to myelofibrosis and acute myeloid leukemia and have a shorter life expectancy. There are not too many options. Interferon is one of the options, but it does not work in many patients. It does cause many side effects. Even with the advent of a new long-acting interferons, the results do not support long-term use of those medications. And other traditional medications that we have been using in this setting, alkylating agents like busulfan, melphalan, chlorambucil, aragonitic phosphorus, are known to be leukomogenic meaning increasing the risk of transformation to acute myeloid leukemia. So there was a clear need for a new drug that would be developed that is safe and perhaps biologically targeting what is abnormal in PV. And ruxolitinib has fulfilled that role. It is targeting hyperactive JAKSAT pathway. With that, it does diminish very quickly the number of cells in blood. It does diminish very quickly the spleen that may be enlarged in these patients and what I see in my patients, I have treated many patients, quality of life markedly improves within a couple of weeks in many patients that don't have a good options. So now we have complete picture of controlling all blood cell counts, spleen and symptoms, 
in patients with PV after hydroxyurea. This is where the real role for, hydro for ruxolitinib is.